One of the most misunderstood plant nutrients is potassium and what it comes down to is a lot of people will soil test, they'll get a parts per million reading and they'll say, oh, I get enough parts per million. But is that all you need? Well, when it comes to potassium, you're looking at a primary nutrient. We've got nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. They're the nutrients that our plants need the largest quantities of. So for a lot of guys, they say, well, you know what? I gotta make sure that I have those three right. Then I'll start worrying about the other ones. Well, you know what? With nitrogen, I think for the most part, we've got a pretty good handle on how much we need. And phosphorus, you know what? Most guys are doing a pretty good job on phosphorus. Where we see a lot of guys falling down across the country is potassium. This is evidenced by our plant tissue analysis. We've done a lot of plant tissue analysis around the region. Potassium seems to be one of the big ones that we're short on. It doesn't seem to be the biggest. It is the biggest problem that we've got in our region and really across the United States because again, potassium is misunderstood. Parts per million is not enough. Here's what you need. On any farm, anywhere in the country and anywhere in the world, you should not just be looking at parts per million. You should be looking at your base saturation test. And if you're not getting that, you have to. Otherwise, you don't really know if you have enough potassium or not. What base saturation tells you is the ratio of potassium to other nutrients and if you don't have your potassium in ratio you're gonna have deficiencies in the plant period you need to have your potassium in the range of four to eight percent in base saturation and the other nutrients that I'm talking about is calcium magnesium hydrogen and sodium so in other words in a lot of our soils for example we have so much calcium we have so much magnesium that if we have what I would consider an average amount of potassium, it's not in ratio, it's not enough. And we end up short in plant tissue analysis, like Darren said, we'll see plants that are suffering from potassium deficiency. You can see the visual signs on the leaves. For example, in corn, potassium deficiency shows up when the lower leaves have yellowing on the outside edge, the outside edge of the leaf, that's potassium deficiency. All those things are bad and it's not that tough. Just get some more potassium out there, get enough out there so you get up in that range of four to 8% with base saturation. Well, in extreme potassium deficiencies, Brian, we'll see the same thing in soybeans where the outside edge of the leaf turn yellow and when I saw it on some ground that I bought a few years ago I knew wow we've got a real potassium issue out here because soybeans it takes a strong potassium deficiency to show up in the plant and when you think about potassium needs though really soybeans actually use more potassium than what corn does and a lot of guys say well I don't understand my corn yields are going up my corn yields are doing well but my soybean yields just don't seem to be keeping up and a lot of times the difference could be potassium out in your fields yeah so if you want to know how much potassium your crop really needs we do have a free app now at Ag PhD so on your iPad or iPhone just go to the app store and look up Ag PhD fertilizer removal and then you can click in whatever crop you've got and it will tell you how much potassium you're removing from the soil now the other thing is when you talk to some soil scientists out there they will tell you well there's already a whole bunch of potassium in the soil and you know what in a lot of cases they're right but do you know what form that potassium is in? Well, it's in the form of feldspars. Feldspars are rock, and rock isn't going to break down very quickly. So most of the potassium that's in your soil, it's not gonna come available. And in fact, a lot of the potassium that you apply, let's say you put potash out on your ground, how quickly is that gonna come available? It's gonna take a long time to break down, especially in a dry year. I'll guarantee you in a drought year like this year, if you put potash out in the spring, a lot of that was not available for your crop. So that's why a lot of farmers are turning to liquid K sources to, if nothing else, at least supplement what they've got out there already for potassium, because you have to have enough available potassium for any crop you're raising, or you're just not going to get the yields you're hoping for. Well, I, I agree with you, Brian. I, I think the dry sources this year, there's a lot of those dry pellets still out in fields. It's not good when you don't get much rain. So if you want to get stuff to break down quickly, uh, a liquid form sure takes one of the steps out of the equation. When you look at something that's dry, it's got to have enough moisture to break that pellet down first, then it has to have enough moisture to bring it into the crop. With the liquid, you've already got it broken down, now you just need a little bit of rain to get it into the crop. And I'm doing a lot of my potassium right in the furrow as I'm planting, that way I know that I've got it out there, I know it's in close proximity to my roots, I know they're going to find it, and that way it seems to work for me. Now here's the other thing I want you to consider, is most plant nutrients are going to come into the plant through water. Okay, if we have a dry year, what dries out in your soil? The top or down six, eight, 12 inches deep? 
Well, obviously up top is gonna dry out first. So what I'm trying to say here is a lot of times there's still moisture down at a foot or down at two feet, but very often we don't have available potassium down there. So I just want you to consider at least doing some strip till or deep banding of some sort to get some more potassium down a little bit deeper in your ground that's available that your plants can use in a dry year like this one. Well, it does make sense to get down a little deeper. So here's one thing you could do too. When you're soil sampling this fall, take a zero to six inch sample, then take a sample six to 12 inches deep, 12 to 18 inches deep, and 18 to 24 inches deep. If you've never done it before, just do it in a couple areas out in one field just to start building your knowledge base on your farm. When you look at the nutrients, what we're seeing is the top six inches has most of our potassium. Once we get down even six to 12 inches, we don't have very much. And when our roots are going down deep in the summer, looking for moisture and looking for food, well, if they don't find enough food, they keep sucking in more water, trying to bring that food in. And they're just less efficient with their water use. That's why some fields burnt up a lot quicker than fields right across the road. It came down to fertility in many cases. Yeah, so basically you have to have ample fertility, but you have to have the right types of fertility out there too. Well, once again, potassium is extremely important. You knew that already. It's one of the primary nutrients, but what you probably didn't know is that most farmers around the United States are actually short on available potassium, and it is the limiting factor. It is the yield limiting factor when it comes to their crops. So at least consider doing some more soil testing, take a look at base saturation, and consider adding some more potassium next year, especially in the liquid form, and especially a little deeper down in the soil if you want better availability. Better fertility is great for crop production, but it means nothing if you don't control the weeds. Can you identify this week's weed? 